So what we have here first is I'm looking at this first phrase in verse four. And so I can first identify verb here, have seen. So this is an action word. And then looking back, we have this, the, the actor, the you. And so the you is, is doing the action. And then we have an object. And so the object actually is going to be very complicated. The object essentially is introduced by this what, a share, but really the object is picking up on all of this. So let's just use big text, a uh, big line here. So we're gonna... So the object is really one, two, three. So there's really three objects that are going on, okay? And so what are they seeing? They are seeing what the Lord did to the Egyptians. They are seeing him bearing Israel, carrying Israel on eagle's wings. And they are seeing the Lord bring Israel to himself. So really these are, I would say these are object events because there's actions, person, places, and events that are transpiring. So I would, I would describe them as object events. Let's continue to mark this up though. There's a lot more going on here. So we, we need to be very thorough in highlighting each word and this really helps towards our structure. So the next thing I wanna do here is I wanna identify the the, the you. So coming up here, the you, this is where you have to look at the preceding context. So the you comes back up to verse three, thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the people of Israel. So what we could really highlight here is the you is all the people of Israel. Let's see what the word, so Israel is used here, the people so, oh, so this is really, so this is Bain. So this is really house of Jacob, sons of Israel. So really this people it, is sons, or we could say descendants, offspring. That's going to be a significant theological point later that we're going to discuss, especially when it, especially when it comes to covenants. So for, for right now, let's just do offsprings of Jacob and Abraham, going back to Abraham. Okay, so coming along here, then we have a an, uh, an action within this object. So we have an action, and then there's also an actor. So this is a this is an an action here, and then this this I is a actor. So the I is the actor, and this is the Lord. Okay, so this is the Lord, the Lord God, and so we want to be very clear in identifying this. This is, this is not just Lord Adonai. This is Lord Yahweh. So we can write down his name. And so this is in English would be Yahweh. This is the the name that he has revealed to them, and this is also uh, the, the the eternal Creator God, eternal Creator God, and we'll unpack that more in the exposition. For now, we just want to accent that this is, and of course, Yahweh is also bringing up the idea of the the God of the covenant, but we'll discuss that more later. And then the object here for what I did is the Egyptians. This is the object people. And so just, <clears throat> we're going to, again, we're going to unpack all of it in the next video. But for now, we want to highlight this event, the combo of the event is pointing towards in this in this context focusing on Egypt not Israel we are 
primarily dealing with judgment, works of judgment, works of judgment. Coming back here, again, we're looking at structure analysis, so we're, we're just looking at relationships here. I want to note here that this is not typical, the combination of these two. This is the 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 accent of you. There's an emphasis on eyewitness testimony. That occurs here in in the uh, the the perfect the perfect tense. So you have a perfect tense uh, verb here. So this is a a perfect tense, which would be you have seen. Now, obviously, in, in Hebrew, it's not as clear as in Greek or English, where we have specific forms that just identify perfect, verse past, verse, pa for, verse pluperfect, all those different things. A lot of it does deal with context. But So what I would say is that there's this perfect tense, and then the combination of the two here, okay, and the fact that this is not, this is accenting. That's not normal. Normal, you would normally you would have the verb, the, the the you'd have the subject contained within the verb. So the fact that it's you, you have seen, is really bringing out this eyewitness. You witness this past event, and you're still dealing in the present with the reality. It's still vividly in your mind, and you yourselves saw it. So I really want to accent here the eyewitness nature of this of this. So we'd want to call this eyewitness event. Okay. So they themselves have saw what has transpired. Okay. And so what have you seen? Number one, you've seen the judgment of the Egyptians. Now, there's two aspects going on here. Works of judgment as it pertains to the Egyptians, but as it pertains to Israel, works of salvation. They were saved from the slavery of the Egyptians. So I've gone back and forth on this. I think in the workshop, we accent more the works of judgment. Both are true. I don't want to minimize either one. And, and so I think they'll probably looking at how this has transpired works of salvation for and this 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 concerns Israel number 1 and then number 2 you have then a series of events not only in what Yahweh does did to the Egyptians to save them you also have him carrying Israel I carried you on eagle's wings. So again, this is Israel, object, person. And then this is a means. A means. How did, how did God carry the Israelites after he freed them from Egypt? He carried them on e eagle's wings. So we want to look later at the the imagery. There is incredible imagery going on here, but that's for the exposition, not yet. Okay, so at least we can say here is the so the Lord. Notice that Israel is completely passive. This is one thing that I'm really accenting in the structural analysis. God is the actor. All the only action that Israel has done is watch the work of the Lord in saving them. And so even in the Red Sea, what we'll see later in the exposition that. Moses says to Israel, just stand by and watch the power of the Lord. Watch the salvation of the Lord. So here again, we have the I bore. And so I bore is how some translate it. We could say carry. And so let's just object and then means. So And then, of course, this would be Israel. When I'm studying, I always find the antecedent for the pronoun. So the Lord not only rescues them from Egypt, he carries them on eagles' wings. And then even more than that, he brings them to himself. And so we have here a, we have an object, person, 
and people. Okay, so the Lord is bringing Israel to himself. Okay, so there's a, there is a third action here. These are all, if, if I come down here, these are all perfect tenses. And, and these are consecutive. So they're building upon each other, building from this perfect tense. So these are all perfect tense. And so this is why they're translated in the past. Next, we now have, so there's, there's this main eyewitness account reminder. And this is a past action. And so we're going to move from past action to a present call to action. And then it's a conditional. And if they meet the condition, there's a promise. There's several promises. And then there is a, a reminder to, to, there's an intercessory statement at the conclusion. So coming here now, we have a conjunction connection. So I'll just highlight here. That there's a conjunction here. This is really functioning as an, as an inferential connecting and so we could we could make this connection here we, we we use the three dots to signify inference so you have a you you have a conjunction and really it's the context that's really determining the the inference so and now and now so this is a this is a time reference now this is where it kind of gets crazy here. Okay, so you have you have two verbs. One's an infinitive, and they're com they're combining. So here you have a you have another conjunction. Now this is a a dependent conjunction, and so this would be a this would be a a condition a conditional clause. Okay, and then you have you have the main verb here you will obey okay so if you will obey so this is a, an action future and there is a fine line between this being a, a, a condition and a command so we could see a future action and and really a, a conditional statement can also be presented as a command and we'll discuss that more in the exposition part of 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 this video series here for now, what we want to accent is there's this future statement, and then there's this an infinitive that's really piggybacking. So these two, these two words are working together. They're linked together. And so this really is strengthening that future action. So it's strengthening. So we could say that this is some translations will say in indeed i have truly or indeed the point being that if if there's true obedience and then it's my voice what are you to obey my voice so this is the voice of the lord and also we could say this is word of god because what comes out what comes out of the voice of of the mouth is the word of god okay and then here we can see also that this word so the the, the hebrew word here is im shamoa tishmeu im shamoa tishmeu but you can look at the you can look at the word here and you see those three main letters for those of you who know Hebrew. Shema. It's where you get Shema. Shama. Shema in um the third person singular perfect form. But we later will recognize that this is the great Shema, the command in, in Deuteronomy. So really you have this well known word that's being used here. So I'll just write this in English. And this is just a derivation of Shema. Shema is the derivation of Shama. And Shama is just a third person, singular perfect form. Cal perfect, I believe. Is that Cal perfect? Yeah, Cal perfect. And, um, and so this here has a nuance between hearing 
and obeying. And the two are, you have to hear, but the, the point of hearing is to obey. And so we really see a powerful, very powerful word that's being used. And we'll, we'll unpack the, the, the significance there. So we have, we had, we have this, this future conditional statement, which is implying a command. So this is not optional. Okay. We're going to see later that this is not optional. This is really a command, even though it's, it's worded in this way, the, the syntax is really bringing out this command aspect because God has already saved them. Okay. So they are, let's, let's be clear here. This is, let's just make a note here. Be a circumcision and 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 Abraham's covenant with God, God's covenant with Abraham. Next, we have here, and so this is where we have. So, what we're going to notice here is, uh, so we have, and now if obeying, you will obey my voice, and you will keep my covenant. Okay, and so clearly here, we we recognize that these are almost the same things. So what we see here is that there is this parallelism going on. These two are almost the same thing. Keeping my covenant and obeying my voice is in fact the same thing. So that, but this is not this, this in one sense, it's synonymous or exp so, that, so we could say, or what type of parallelism is going on here? We could say that this is probably uh, syn synonymous Let's write this down here. This is either synonymous or clarification. And, and I guess possibly expansion. It's not that God's voice, he's giving something different. And then also listen to my voice and keep as in like, it's something different. Really, this is, so we can look here. This is further clarifying or unpacking what what the specific content is of the voice, what the specific, if it's what this, what is the specific context of the voice you will keep is the same as, as obeying, but it's taking it next level. So let's look here really closely at these words. Shamar. There's a, a typo. I don't know why it's connected to the wrong place. This should be connected to keep. So this, this so this is uh, it's a typo in, in accordance this should be, uh, this is a shamar, which means to guard, watch, or preserve. So not only are you to obey my voice, but you are to keep, to guard, and to preserve my covenant. So obviously there's a there's a keeping aspect, but it's really a much a stronger sense than just simply just obey the covenant, whatever happens to it, don't worry about it. It's this keeping and guarding and protecting and preserving. So it's really this this fuller picture of what's going on here. So let's let's write this down here. I'm going to underline. And so this this idea of of guarding and keeping. And my goodness, we can go back to Genesis and talk. This word is used in Genesis, which would actually be potentially a, a further proof of the the Adamic covenant because Adam is also told to guard the garden. But anyway, I digress. We'll discuss that in the exposition portion. Okay, so there to keep. What are they to keep? They are to keep God's covenant. So again, we'll, we'll unpack all these things further. Essentially, so so what we're really seeing here is this one incredible, and I and I want to say it's a command. It's there is a so let's write this down here just so that we're full of things. So this here, this is a this is a command. And if you want to put in parentheses, if you want to put in parentheses, there is a a conditional aspect here fair enough but but really there is a command and you see that in the in the shema in Deuteronomy 6 hero israel it's not optional okay so maybe the structure it's worded here i i think probably there's there's both aspects going on that there's a conditional aspect and there is this command aspect meaning to say that if you don't obey you're not going to get right you can give a command, but still give the benefits. And so here, I think probably the reason for it written for it being written in a conditional sense is that it is a command, but it's also conditional. If you don't obey the command, you're not going to get you're not going to get the 
the reward. So it's very, it's very strong. In in in, in Tagalog, sobrang lakas. Next we have here, moving from a command to a future. And so the future is, there's a verb here. And then there's also a conjunction. And again, the, the sense, they're all vobs. So it's the same conjunction, but there's different nuances depending upon the syntax, how it's structured. So that's just so beyond, so far beyond the scope of our of the class. Maybe we'll do a, a separate video that really unpacks the, the 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 use of the. So when we say "vob," the conjunction, whereas we have our own separate and conjunction, they just connect a "vob," the letter. Uh, they they connect the 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 consonant as a prefix to indicate a, a connecting word. Okay, so we have here a state. And this is future. And so the, then the subject is you. And the object, the one who is receiving the you, is the person, the Lord. So this is the Lord. And then the description of the you. You will be a, a treasured possession. This is their description here. So let's bring it back to here. And um, I wanna make a correction here. This is wrong. So what this should be here is, I've mixed this up. The, the object is the you. The subject is in fact, so that's grammatical. <laughs> this is so much, this is confusing here. Let me just check something. Okay, yeah, so fair enough. So the subject is the one being given to to the object of person, the object of person. So this is where grammar conflicts. Okay, so I'm just going to make a correction here. Let's just change this. I want to make... So we're changing it. So obviously the U, grammatically, the U is the subject, to me is the object, but semantically... What's the full meaning contextually? The Lord is the actor or the recipient, the one who possesses Israel. Okay. So this that's why we're changing this. So this should be this should be actor or subject, the one who receives the the possessed item or per people. So change this here. This really shows you how it's so easy to get confused and to get mixed up. So this is all of us make mistakes. I make mistakes. My notes are wrong now. I got to change that. Okay, so this is coming back to here. And then the object is Israel. They become the possessed of, they become the possessed of the Lord. So Israel is possessed by the Lord. He is the, he is the owner. So throughout scripture, we'll hear the earth is the Lord's. So the Lord owns the earth. And so then here we have a, a sphere or realm. So they are taken out of all the peoples and they become God's special possession. And then the reason for this is the basis is The basis for this is because to me the whole earth. So the so the, again that's that's the object is the Lord. The earth is in that sense. The earth is functioning more like a like a subject. But really, let's rewrite this just so that it's clear clear translation. So this would be a. An excellent translation. You will be a treasured possession to me because the whole earth is mine. So I own so actively, let's write this because I own the whole earth. So it's in this sense that's why we're we're switching around the the, the object no so that's kind of confusing so if, if you were doing this on your own or you're turning into project i wouldn't mark you wrong 
I just make a clarification. Interpreting the word, we're dealing in grammar 100%, but we're looking at the final conclusion because that's what we're going to teach or preach. We're looking at the final conclusion. So here we would want to teach that God owns the whole earth. Israel is the possession of the Lord. The Lord possesses Israel. All right, so there's this, this first promise. So this is reward number one. We're just going to put reward here. Let's change it. I don't want to use reward. Let's let's use. So this this concerns now promise. You will be my possession. So then here we can clearly see the relationship between these two. This is a result. So we can think conditional result. And then again, looking here. You have a, another another statement to a, a U. Now here we're just going to leave it as we're just be, we're just going to leave it as the, the opposite way here. So we'll do, um, you will be. You will be to me. What's the description here now? Description one. Description two. I'm going to leave it this way. If th this is super confusing, if it's super confusing, I apologize. You could write it either way as long as you understand these relationships. I'm not going to rewrite it here. So essentially here though we have again parallelism going on between I'll just use black. It's just confusing here. I'll just use green. You have between the you between the you between the me and then here as well treasured possession, kingdom of priests. And then really here, what I want to see here is this is this is most likely a a, a, clarific, a a clarification as well or expansion. What does kingdom of priests mean? A, a holy nation, okay? Kingdom of priests can be further defined as a holy nation. So it's not that you're going to be two different kingdoms. It's that you are a kingdom of priests. What does that really mean? A, a set apart, a holy nation. So these are really, this is clarification or expansion, really unpacking and clarifying what he means by kingdom of priests. Okay, and so this is the description that's going back to, to Israel. This is the subject, and this is the, the object possessor. Okay, in fairness, we could flip the, fir the previous sentence around. This one, we could also flip it around. We're just, it's either one's fine. Okay. And so once we realize there's more parallelism going on here, let's just make a big parallel here. So more parallelism, there's really only one promise that's, that's being given. Okay. Because this, the second parallel idea is just further expanding the first. So you have a, so if just to be clear here, so that we're, we're really tracking with what I'm saying. So we can just come down here. Let me just. All right. So there's a command. It's conditional. The result is the promise. And these are these are in an inference in relationship to their past because of what they've experienced here. There is this final identification here. Okay. So we have these are the words. So this is the identification. These are the words. And then what's the description here? Which you shall speak. So this would be object. So, and, and this is a relative. So we can have, you will speak. Moses is the speaker. The words are the object and then the object people. So this is object people. And this is object words. Probably something else you could use. I'm just going to use words. So, and then, so that, then that, that connects back to the identification here. So this would be the you, and then this is coming, 
coming back to Israel. Okay, the sons of Israel. Okay, and so what's the big idea going on here? The 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 big idea going on here is the 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 recipients of the words. Identification of the recipients. Okay. And there is also this idea as well in parentheses of this mediation which is going on because Moses is going to take the words to the people, then the people will say something and then Moses will bring it back as well. So there is an identification of the recipients and really there's a mediation going on. So then the big relationship is all of these words are then going to be given to Israel. So I hope that's helpful. So if I'm if I am preaching this, and we'll discuss the exegetical outline more once we finish the entire thing, but the the entire uh, work, Bible study. But just right off the bat, if I'm preaching this, I want to see a major point here, a major point here, and then we could do one, two, three. So this would be the Lord's works. The Lord's covenant, uh, the the Lord's the Lord's mediator and people, the Lord's the the mediation, we could say mediation, or the in parentheses recipient. So we'll, we'll unpack that more later. Okay, so that's really so you can really see how you can see here now how important the structure analysis is. This takes a lot of time, but once you understand the structure, you can easily preach and 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 teach this. So we'll once we exposit the text, then we'll come back and and fill in some more blanks. Once you really understand what's going on, we can really finish our ex, our exegetical outline. So. There really is an interplay between the structure analysis, the, the and then all the significance because we still we have to we just can't preach this the way it stands here. So just to be clear here, we can't preach this by itself, w w just as this stands. And the reason for this some some considerations here, and we'll close on this. Some considerations. Redemptive history. So how this relates. Redemptive. Redemptive historical, and we're looking at specifically past and future. So we're looking back at how this relates to Abraham. We're looking forward how this relates to, to Christ and also the new covenant. And so that leads to the second point. The second point that must be considered is Christ, how Christ fulfills and how Christ relates. So we'll put Christ relationship. Number three, law, how law relates. Okay, so these are three fundamental considerations. Maybe you want to add other considerations. I think these are three, these are three major aspects. So then we're looking at all this is leading us towards the the theological truths that we have to consider. And then and then we can move towards the the preaching or teaching. So yes, this is a good exegetical, but exegetical if you remember is in the original context and we're including in the original context historical a uh, redemptive historical interpretation as well. So so these are not enough. We have to look at we have to look at this outline in with these considerations before we can preach or teach. Okay, so even though this is a great start, it's not comprehensive. So just don't watch this video and just go right into to, to preaching it. You still have to do the hard work of looking at the, the the framework, the biblical framework, the fulfillment in Christ, the relationship of Christ. Uh, and so even with Christ's relationship, then law, we can also include here law and gospel. But this is a good start. And so just by way of conclusion, I want to really encourage us that the Mosaic Old Covenant 
has significance for us. And so you're going to say, Tim, how does it have significance for us? Well, looking here, these words specifically are used in the New Testament of the church. So we have to look and see how that relates. Okay. We, we are to obey God. We are to keep his covenant. So these right here are one, two, three, four, five fundamental concepts, words, and concepts that are directly applied to us and including here, the voice of the, of, of the Lord God. So to, to simply sit here and say, Oh, Tim, this is for Israel, not for us. You can't say that because of, because these, these fundamental concepts we'll see later in the exposition portion, they are directly applied to the church. So we want to look and see if it's how that really plays out, because I think it's very strong. So I'll catch you on the next video, the exposition of the text.